So how do you remove the background of images in Photoshop? All right, my name is Dan Scott. I'm an Adobe Certified Instructor and Chief Course Creator at BYOL.com. And today we're gonna learn how to remove the background from images in Photoshop. Also, if you wanna follow along, there is exercise files. There is a free link in the description. All right, let's get started. So let's go up to File, let's go to Open, and we're gonna open up Quick Select, okay? And there's gonna be 01 and 02. Thanks, Chris Barbaros. I tried. Uh, let's go to Quick Select 01. So these are the shoes we're gonna be cutting out. Now we're gonna be using this tool here. So on your toolbar, it's the fourth tool down. Make sure it's the Quick Selection tool and not the Magic Wand tool. And up the top here, these are the settings for the brush, basically how big it is, okay? Now, mine's remember the last thing I was doing, so we're gonna have to change these. So see this little drop down arrow here? Okay, click on that, and um, it's gonna be different for every image. Generally, a good starting point is 50. Yours is probably set to 50 by default, it's a good start. And the hardness, I have it at about, mm, about 85. Okay, that is just, I like it kind of hard, but not too hard. Uh, no magic number, just in this top one, it can be at 100%. The quick selection tool is pretty, it's got a bit of magic in there, so it's not as precise. So I'm not too worried about the hardness. And all we need to do is click, hold, and drag. Click, hold, and drag. You can see I just clicked, hold, and drag across this a little bit, and it magically jumps out. Mainly because there's a nice good color contrast, okay, between the uh, the shoes here, or I'm not even sure what to call them, but uh, these things and the background. And I can just keep dragging, okay? Keep dragging, keep dragging, keep dragging. So I get the whole thing. Now I've missed a little bit over here, so I might have to zoom in easy, okay? And you might have to change your brush size. I'm gonna try and do it with this bigger brush because I'm lazy, and I just kind of nip the edge there. Now what might happen is you might go a bit too far, like that. <gasps> you can either go edit step backwards, okay? Or up here you can switch it to the minus, okay? So we're in this plus, like adding to the selection, this minus, okay, removes from the selection. Cool, and you can just kind of paint it in. I'm just clicking, holding, and dragging until it kind of gets to where I need it to be. Now, don't worry perfectly. These kind of, these marching ants that run around the outside, they're not, um, they're, they're a good representation, but they're not perfect. There's gonna be a little bit of fudging either side. Okay, it's not a, like a real solid line. So don't, don't worry too much until we've actually done our mask and check it. So let's go back to plus. Okay, I wanna add to the selection, holding spacebar, clicking, holding, and dragging. And I'm just gonna drag across all of this and hope for the best. Pretty good, pretty good, missed that bit. I just click once on that, and yeah, pretty amazing um, selection. I'm gonna zoom out. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to edit, copy, jump to this second version, and go edit, paste. Okay, or you can use your click, hold, drag, drag, drag option that I've been telling you to do every time. Either way works in this case. Okay, I'm gonna drag it down, and it's an okay selection. Now we're gonna work ways of refining it, but that's a good simple start. Let's look at a different way of doing it. So let's go to File Open and let's look at two other files. So it is Quick Select 03 and 04. So Marnie and Sydney. Okay, so this one here is going to be copying the shoe into this background here. So we're going to have the shoe selected. We're going to grab our Quick Selection tool. And the trick is here, like this one's already been cut out onto white. So instead of trying to select all the shoe, often it can be easy to select the background first and then invert that selection. Okay, so um, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna click and hold drag across the background, kind of around the sides here. And eventually it goes, oh, well, you probably mean all of this background. You can see it's, I've got all the background selected. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to select. There's one in there called inverse. So have a little look there. You can see the um, the marching ants are around the outside. Cause basically if I copied this now, copied it, moved the cross, paste it. I've just got like the background, it's kind of cool. But what I wanna do is go to select and go to inverse. Okay, now I've got the shoe selected. There's one little bit, the shoelace hasn't been done perfect. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Okay, and now my brush is too big, so I'm gonna go up and change my brush size up here. Okay, drag it down. Now, what you'll find is you'll learn a shortcut pretty quickly in Photoshop. Any brush tool, we're gonna to look at loads of them through this course, is that if you look at your keyboard, next to the P key, there's those two square brackets. Okay, open and close square brackets. That is the shortcut for making it bigger and smaller. 
Okay, try both of those. One will make it bigger, one will make it smaller. I'm gonna make mine smaller so it's kind of a, an appropriate size for this. And I'm just gonna click, hold, and drag across. Okay, and don't worry if it doesn't get it perfect. Can you see it's missing a couple little bits? It's gonna be, oh, these matching ends aren't like the perfect representation of what you've got selected. There's a few little white dots there that need to be picked up. But in our case, this is going to be fine. I'm gonna zoom out. Cool, so I've got my shoe selected. Let's go to copy and edit, paste. Cool, huh? Now we're using a copy and paste method. It's not the best way. In the next videos, we're gonna do a layer mask, but for the moment, at our current skill level, it's working perfectly. Oh, except for this guy here, okay? Uh, I forgot about him. So I'm gonna to go to undo, so he's not there. Go back into here, zoom in. And I'm gonna show you a couple of more tricks. So um, remember, you can go to minus, okay, and just move this bit. There's a lot of toing and froing often when you're doing selections, so uh, I try not to do too many shortcuts, but just the good ones. If you hold down the Alt key on a PC or Option key on a Mac, can you see my little cursor? It's a little hard to see. Can you see it changes to a little minus? It's plus, minus, plus, minus. And you can see it toggling up here just by tapping that key. That's what I use. So hold it down, click and drag. Click in there once. Let go, grab that bit. Minus, add. There's a lot of kind of toing and froing. Now I'm gonna to go to copy, go to paste, and I've got that little hole in there now. Okay, so that's the basics for the quick selection tool. Add to the selection, you remove it, you change your brush sizes, and then often what happens is you just need to tidy things up. Okay, so this shoe in particular, okay, I'm gonna go back to my move tool, I'm gonna to use my scale tool, which is command T on a Mac or control T on a PC. I'm gonna scale it down. Okay, you might have noticed that when I scale mine down, I'm kind of cheating, right? Instead of scaling it this way and then this way, it somehow magically went in from the center. So I want to use Command T, okay, for my transform or Control T on a PC. I hold down Shift to make it kind of do its proportions, okay? But if you hold down Alt as well, okay, or Option on a Mac, so Shift and Option, you can see it does it to the center. I like that little shortcut. It's a bit of finger gymnastics, okay, holding Shift and either Alt or Option down, okay? It's a bit of a pain, I know, but... um. Ignore that shortcut if you're finding getting blown away. Dan's too many shortcuts in this video. Getting it to the right sort of size, I'm gonna hit return. And what I wanna do is two things. I probably wanna darken the shoe up because the background's got a nice strong black. This one here doesn't seem to have it. And I wanna add a bit of a drop shadow. So drop shadow is easy. I've got this layer here. Let's double click the word layer one and call it shoe. Okay, with it selected and highlighted, FX, drop shadow. And it's up to you and up to the image, but I'm going to crank up the size. You can see it just kind of adds this kind of, uh, yeah. Mm, drag in the opacity, size, maybe even the spread. Okay, just to give it kind of a bit of a black hue around it. I'm not using distance, you'll notice. Okay, I don't want it to have like a drop shadow that way. You might like it that way. I'm just going for kind of zero distance so it kind of fuzzes all around the outside. Preview on, preview off, just to make it look like it's sitting there a bit better. Let's click OK. One of the other things I find is quite obvious when you've copied one, one image from another is often the levels are different, okay? The strong blacks and whites. To do that, let's click on the shoe layer and let's go to adjustments and we're gonna use levels. We've used them before, okay, when we corrected our images. So click on this. And the, the difference between what we've done before and what we're gonna do now is if I adjust the levels, I'm gonna radically adjust them. Can you see it's adjusting the shoe and the background? Okay, so what I wanna do is see this little um, insignificant little thing here, click on that. Okay, all that happens is that just tells levels to work on the layer directly underneath. See the little arrow says just this layer, not this layer. Okay, so as long as levels is just above the shoe layer, the levels are only gonna affect that layer. Okay, and I've totally wrecked it, but so now I can do adjustments and it's just for that specific little layer. Okay, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to just make it look like it's part of that background image a little bit more. Increase the whites a little bit. It's mainly the grays I feel like they need to be a bit more. How do I like it? I'm gonna turn the eye on, off. See what I'm trying to do there, kind of? All right, let's look at that original image as well. Do the same thing for this. Okay, so the levels I feel like are fine. Okay, so all I wanna do is add a drop shadow. Drop shadow. Okay, and sneaky trick. Okay, you can go into here, click on the shoe layer, right click it, say copy layer style. So all of these things in this little effects things are considered layer styles. So I'm gonna copy it. So I just right clicked anywhere in here, okay, and say copy layer style. Go over to here, 
find that same layer of my shoes. I know it is because I got the eyeball on and off. Right click it and say paste layer style. And I've got the same kind of thing going on there. Turn the eyeball on and off. You can see it just kind of settled as it in that image a little bit better. It's not total reality, right? We've got giant sandals, sandals uh, across <laughs> some graffiti, but you get what I mean, right? All right, it's time for an update for this video. Um, rather than replacing the whole video, the, the first chunk of this is being perfect, and tools you need to know, and probably still a lot of what I go to. But there's a new feature. It has a couple of limitations, so I think it's good in addition to what we've learned already in this video. And it's this option here. Actually, you can't see it at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to revert, because we've done some selections already, right? So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to this one called Revert. I haven't showed you this before. It just kind of gets back to when the file was opened. Instead of going undo, 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 you hit Revert, and it will go back to the beginning. So where it works really good is this contextual taskbar now. Okay, there's this option here that says Remove Background. You've probably clicked it already and gone, oh, look at that. Pretty awesome. It does a pretty amazing job. There's a couple of problems with this particular one. It's the best of the two that we've done already in this course. And we'll do the same thing. We'll drag it over to this one. Okay. And you can see it's done a pretty amazing job, right? Didn't have to even get the tool and figure out the brush size and color it in. The only trouble is we have a very similar result, except that the, um, uh, what do you call that thing? Oh, there's a name for it. You know it. Whatever that thing is called. <laughs> you pull yourself up by it. Um, and there's a hole in here. Can you see there's a hole in the shoe? So it's pretty good. Like, it depends on how crisp the image is. It can be. It might just be the thing you use. But what I find is often it can get me really close, and then I need to use the quick selection tool that we've learned already in this video. Let's do the other one. Let's go this one here. So remove background. It's like pretty magical. Does this one really good, except in the first um, way we did this, I didn't want the lollipop, but it's got the lollipop because it's in focus, it's part of the scene. So yeah, you're like, okay, so this one would be fine if we wanted the lollipop because it's a pretty amazing selection. But if we didn't want the lollipop, use the quick selection tool. You can be a bit more like specific on picking things. Now, how would you use these in combination? Let's say we want to get rid of this. What I can do now is grab the quick selection tool and select this, again, okay, kind of color it in. Mm, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what I can do is, can you see over here on your mask, we have black versus white. We'll zoom in. Can you see there's white bits are showing through, black bits are hidden. So what I can do is I can say, I want to make a selection of this, okay, and I would like everything selected to be black so it can't be seen. So what I do is down here, I can say I'd like this to be filled with what? With black and it should go away. So that's how you can kind of combine the two, the fancy remove background feature with the fill option. All right, let's do the same thing for the shoe. So the shoe did well, except it's kind of these parts a little bit broken. So I can do it either in this original one or in this new one. We'll do it in this new one because it's easier to see. Grab my quick selection tool. I'm on the plus. I've found a brush size. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to say, we did this in the last one, right? We kind of went you, not you. So remember holding down my alt key on a PC. Uh, option on a Mac, there's a bit of adding, and a bit of subtracting, and a bit of adding, and a bit of subtracting. Okay, and let's say I'm happy with that. What I can do now is make sure I've got my mask selected, because if I click on this one, this is my actual image, that's my mask. If I go image fill with black, it'll work, but it'll fill it with black. <laughs> so what I want to say is on my mask, okay, I would like, remember black hides things. So I'm going to say I would like to hide this thing I've got selected, fill with black. And it's gone. Deselect. Let's do the opposite for this guy here. And this one here, we could use a quick selection tool, but I actually could just use the rectangle tool because it's I can be pretty um, vague with this one because I just want all of that to be black. This and that. So same again. Make sure I've got my mask selected. Go to fill. Go to black. Okay. And don't use black. <laughs> uh, whoops. You'll do this. I'll leave it in the course. And what ends up happening is, can you see over here, I just told you, like, black is hiding stuff. And you're like, didn't you just say black would hide stuff? It does. Look, made a big hole in it. So I'm going to undo, and I'm going to say I'd like to fill it with white. So white shows things through. I want this to see. I want to see this little white chunk here. I'm going to deselect, and then we're good. So the remove background option is amazing. Often though, you need to kind of tie it together with a little bit of selection and adding to the mask, removing from the mask. That does get better and better. You might be in the future going, hey, my shoe didn't even have a hole. The amazing power behind Photoshop using some of the artificial intelligence gets better and better and things might change a bit. All right, that is it. Uh, if you did want to go further though and you're like, oh, I want more Photoshop, uh, check out my Photoshop Essentials or Photoshop Advanced course. We do all this cool stuff. 
tips and tricks, class projects, challenges. You get help from Photoshop experts and the all important certificate at the end to prove how awesome you are at Photoshop. Uh, links for those in the description. All right, that's it. Hi, da.